ingenuity at the full. Flying has been a fascination with humankind since the early days, inspiring us to discover new ways to touch the skies. The Wright brothers in 1903 demonstrated the possibility of flight by successfully operating a powered heavier than aircraft. Currently, we have several types of aircrafts that are divided into two main categories, helicopters and the airplanes. Technically, they are referred to as rotary wing helicopters and the fixed wing airplanes. In the helicopter, the rotor blades mounted on top or in some cases sides generate lift whereas in an airplane, fixed wings generate lift once enough air is flowing over them. In a helicopter, two sets of rotors are present to keep it stable but the airplanes are inherently stable and tend to return to a balanced position if all control inputs are neutralized. So now, a question should strike in your mind. How do they generate lift against gravity? Do they use the same mechanism? Any clue? No? Yes? Okay, so now let me explain it to you. There is a basic difference between these two, though the underlying principle is the same, that is of airfoil operation which means that all that is required to generate lift is to turn a flow of air. There are various factors that affect the turning of the flow which can be grouped as follows. Object The geometry of the wing has a large effect on the amount of lift generated that is the shape of the airfoil and the size of the wing. In addition to this, the ratio of the wing span to the wing area also affects the amount of lift. Motion. The object should be moved through the air to generate lift and this implies that the lift depends on the air velocity and also to the inclination of the flow with the object. Air. The lift depends on the mass of the flow and also to the viscosity and compressibility of the air. Hence all the above mentioned parameters can be collectively used to have the lift equation. When the lift force is more than the weight of the main structure, the structure lifts off the ground. Simple. Okay, so coming back to the design of the airfoil. Needless to say, the airfoil design is inspired from that of a bird's wings. Sounds interesting. The airfoil deflects the oncoming air or a downward force, resulting in a force on the airfoil in the direction opposite to the deflection of air and this force is known as aerodynamic force and can be resolved into two components lift and drag. Lift and drag are the main keywords of aerodynamics. During the design of any aircraft, engineers try to maximize lift while minimizing the drag. What will happen when the blade cuts across an airstream? Of course, there will be an airflow below and above the blade, which means that a drag force is acting on the rotor blade. An airfoil generates lift by exerting a downward force on the air as it flows past. According to Newton's third law, the air must exert an equal and opposite or upward force in the airfoil which is lift. The airflow changes direction as it passes the airfoil and follows a path that is curved downward. Therefore, we can see that it is Newton's third law of motion which is at work. The principle of why a lift occurs in an airfoil is most of the time wrongly attributed to. Yes, I repeat, wrongly attributed to Bernoulli's theorem. But it is not so. The detailed explanation is beyond the scope of this video. But if you are interested, please do write to us and yes, we will be happy to help you. Recently, the news of the flight of the first helicopter, Ingenuity, on Mars is all over the place. NASA Ingenuity helicopter flies on Mars. Why is so much interest generated? What's so special about it? Ever wondered how a helicopter could fly on Mars? Is it the same as flying on Earth? Ooh, so many queries popping up, right? Okay, so now let's find out how NASA made it possible. To understand the concept in a simplified manner, we will start by taking a typical example of a ground helicopter. How on the earth a helicopter lifts itself from the ground? For sure, it requires a lot of physics. Oh, 
What is this? Two rotor blades? One above the other. But why? Because of the rotor on the top as per the laws of conservation of momentum, when it rotates, a counter torque is generated which rotates the helicopter body in the opposite direction. To prevent that, another set of rotors rotate in the opposite direction to keep the body stable. Okay, so now let's proceed. At the center of gravity of the blades, a force acts in the downward direction. And I hope you know that force, right? Yes, it's the weight due to the mass of the blades. So, now we have the mass of an individual blade of the helicopter which is found to be 0.29 grams hence the weight can be given as w is equals to m into g where g is equals to 9.8 meter per second square the gravitational acceleration on earth the mass of the helicopter body is about 20.2 grams hence the weight comes out to be after having the idea of weight let's move on to the lift equation as already mentioned the lift equation has following major parameters weight of the structure, air density, wingspan and the rotational speed. The lift force on a blade is given by this equation. Now the area A is the area of the total rotor disc. So area A is given by A is equals to pi r square. Here r is equals to 6 cm. So area of the rotor disc is here CL is assumed to be 1.6 a typical lift coefficient value. Density of air is taken as 1.21 kg per meter cube. The angular velocity of the blades is considered to be 473.6 rpm. The rotational speed of the blade is omega is equals to and the linear velocity of blades in meter per second is hence the lift force comes out to be. Now if we combine the lift force for the two rotor discs the overall lift force acting on the helicopter will be. So what is your observation? We got lift force which is equals to 0.2065 newtons whereas the weight of the helicopter is 0.198 newton. And as you can see lift force is more than the weight of the helicopter therefore the helicopter will be lifted up on the earth. Now what if we take this helicopter on Mars? Before answering this just to see the comparison between the Earth and the Mars. The gravitational acceleration of Earth is found to be 9.807 meter per second square, whereas for Mars it is 3.721 meter per second square. So the gravity of Mars is 1 by 0.379 that of the Earth. Similarly, the atmospheric density of Earth is 1.217 kg per meter cube, whereas for Mars the value is 0.02 kg per meter cube. Hence, the air density is 1 by 0.377 of the earth. So what? Well, let us substitute these values in the equation. What we'll get? We get lift force which is equal to 0.001599 Newton and the weight of the helicopter at Mars which is equal to 0.07516 Newtons. And as we can see, weight is more than the lift. Consequence, this helicopter will not be lifted on Mars. Oof, now what? Yay! Here comes the ingenuity in the picture, pun intended. The scientists at NASA studied and tested various configurations and finally zeroed in on a design, which had minimum mass, hence weight, long wings and high rotational speed, almost in order more than that of Earth helicopters. It also has innovative solar cells, batteries and other components. The results we have seen are fantastic. What we did are the back of the envelope calculations. To realize such a system requires lots of effort and ingenuity in structures design, sensor design and controller design. As already discussed that the Mars atmosphere is 99% less dense than the atmosphere of Earth, ingenuity has to be light with rotor blades that are much larger and should spin much faster than what would be needed for a helicopter of Ingenuity's mass on Earth. We will provide a comparative chart at the end of this video. Also, like on Earth, this helicopter cannot be controlled by a joystick-based remote control because of the distance involved. It can take up to 15 minutes or more for the command from Earth 
to reach Mars and equal time to come back. So loss of autonomy is required. Similarly, thermal issues are also severe which need careful attention. With all these considerations, ingenuity is an ingenious way to travel on Mars. So now we'll put the ingenuity parameters in the lift equation which we have already mentioned before and see what are the results. So the parameters we have are as follows. Hence, considering all these values, we get total lift force is equal to 2.9 newtons whereas the weight is 0.68 newtons. So here the lift force is more than the weight and because of this, the 19 inch tall ingenuity lifted off the ground, hovered in a place, slightly turned and calmly touched back down. Incredible! So the physics behind the overall concept can be studied in much detail from our Saras 3D content, a genius 3D learning solution. Let me list it down for you. Airfoil working principle in grade 10 physics, which will be useful for you to understand the airlift calculation. Newton's third law in grade 9 and 11, it brings out the concept of why dual rotors or tail fans are required. Gravitation, which starts from grade 9. Air drag in grade 11, which gives the mechanical properties of fluids. And in the same chapter, you will get the concept of Bernoulli's principle. So what if ingenuity operated on the earth? Go through this comparative chart and find out the comparison. At the end, it's time for some homework. So recall your concepts of physics and give it a try to answer the following. First, can any helicopter fly on the moon? Second, why do we have to go all the way to Mars to test? Well, this is the end of this video. Thank you.